all right guys welcome to another video okay it's currently february 20th 2024 and right now the biggest kvk going on is one that has 1960 which is the strongest undefeated kingdom in the game uh there's 2605 that's where his goal is he's the largest content creator in the game there's 1093 which some people argue is stronger than 1960. i guess we'll find out in this kvk they have a lot of numbers right so they have a huge numbers advantage over everyone else and there's three other uh groups of fours uh, so three uh groups of four a seed kingdoms so 12 kingdoms total right there's a lot of kingdoms in there a lot of people are watching streaming talking about it and uh the reason why it's free for all is because diplo broke down so they couldn't reach a conclusion where they felt like two sides were fair i think it's actually kind of crazy that we somehow turn into this um meta if you will that it always has to be something where you pair two sides and they have to be equally matched right and power or kp should be fair and that's better than when you just have a very one-sided kbk right because when it's very one-sided uh it's really boring and then the bigger kingdoms that are imperium they can't drop power and they actually get in this death spiral where it's really hard for them to recruit they accumulate more they accumulate more dead weights and eventually a lot of these kingdoms collapse right so i get you want a competitive kbk but it doesn't always have to be two sides right so if you look into the game right now and and rise of kingdoms a lot of the characters the chinese characters are from either the three kingdoms saga uh so there's a novel called the romance of the three kingdoms uh it was depicting like maybe like 800 or a thousand years before uh, a warring period where three kingdoms uh, were fighting each other to essentially take over China, right? And during that time, uh, Guan Yu was involved in that, uh, Cao Cao was involved in that, uh, XY is involved in that, right? And then another period is, uh, this. I think, the warring periods. There was like six or seven kingdoms, and like Ho Qi Bin is from that era. Uh, Lu Che, maybe, uh, don't quote me on that. But the whole point is the game is literally even based on historical figures that were around during a period where it was a free-for-all right and when it's a free-for-all it really changes the dynamic because right now the way it works is okay you want to train your enemy and you want to set up as many routes into king's land as possible right that that way you could get more territory so you have an advantage and then for the most part besides one kbk i could, I could remember in recent memory when your side wins king's land it's over when it's a free-for-all nothing is over until the very last day and whoever holds a zig in king's line wins that actually really changes the dynamic okay so uh if you guys ever played a game like Catan, all right so Catan is a board game uh but essentially everyone is playing for themselves right you could form alliances you can make trades with other people you can even backstab people and go back on your word now when you backstab people and you're not trustworthy you develop a reputation and also it's just not likable it's a lot more likely that other people will gain up on you but if you play with people in the future and you have backstabbed them before or you have backstabbed someone else in the game and they play with you and they saw you do that they're not going to trust you right so in kvk uh, it's the same right you can actually do whatever you want but if you screw people over that shouldn't be the reason why you don't do it it should just be because that's principle that's you know you're honoring your word but there are repercussions for playing dirty that uh reverberates into future kvks also maybe people in your kingdom don't agree with the way you did it they want to leave maybe people don't want to migrate there there's all that kind of stuff okay but regardless a free-for-all <clears throat> does not have to be stupid no matter how many times chisco says it okay it actually makes it very very exciting so um me and my girlfriend a little embarrassing to admit but we actually like watching some trash reality tv shows and <laughs> Part of what makes a trash reality TV show so exciting is because you don't know what's going to happen, right? There's the emotional roller coaster of up and down, you know, just when you think something's safe, this, this other thing happens. And that can actually happen in a free for all. So I'm a troll, right? Uh, since I was a kid, I always rooted against whoever's a favorite. So no disrespect to 1960. They're just the best kingdom in the game, in my opinion. And they're organized, they have a lot of money, uh, they, are very disciplined and then they have pilots that are on 24 7 so they literally have no downtime if i was fighting them i wouldn't do whatever they're doing in kvk right now this is this thing where oh 2605 is an imperium we're gonna fight them like mano y mano we're gonna, no 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 1960 is stronger than you right if it was me i would try to get every single kingdom in that kvk right now 
to try to actually gain up on 1960. Push them back as far as we can, build a lot of force, make it hard for them to burn through it, uh, drain them, even though it's, you probably can't, but drain them as, as much as possible. And that's actually what I would try to rally everyone to do. When they're the biggest, baddest kingdom in a free-for-all, you should actually expect that to happen to you, okay? That's human nature. That actually is what the weaker people should do to maximize their chances of winning. Once you push them as far back or you drain them as much as possible, then you could worry about the other kingdoms. If I was a group of fours, uh, and I was a three group of fours, first of all, I would probably try to partner up with each other because you know we're already a lot weaker, so we might as well uh, get that alliance going. And then we would actually try to ally with probably 2605, who is probably the weakest one out of the three Imperiums. This way, us working with 2605, maybe we have a shot to take out 1960 and uh, 1093. And then eventually, when we are fighting 2605, it'll be 12v1, and we'll have a good shot there, right? Like, you can do an infinite number of strategies when it's free-for-all, and it actually breaks this monotony of you have to go dip low, you have to pick two sides that are fair. I, I agree, you do want a competitive KVK. Nobody wants a unbalanced, not competitive KVK. But when it's free-for-all, there is a potential for so much more. And even right now, watching that KVK, I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of boring, because 1093 for the most part, well, I guess now they're doing something, but for the most part, they were just chilling, doing a little bit of fighting here or there, not much. And then 2605 is going super defensive, and then 1960 is pushing, but not pushing too hard. And it's just this thing we're just kind of sitting there. Right? What if everyone came over, came over and just started gaining up on 1960? That would be so fun to watch. I would like to see it. And I'm not hating on 1960, even though I am a troll. Right, but I do want like to see when an undefeated super kingdom takes their first L. It's just fun to see maybe if that's going to happen or not. And the way this KVK is going right now, 1960 is going to win because they're not really getting drained. People are playing quote unquote too honorable uh, or thinking they're on equal footing with 1960. Like you're not okay. You want to actually put them as much of a disadvantage as possible, and then even at KVK. Uh, even in Kingsland, right? What's really cool for the free for all is it could be the second or third last day, and you have no idea who's going to win because maybe another kingdom can push in and they could just start burning flags and make it all the way to the zig. And the person that's actually the kingdom that's holding the zig is completely trained. Uh, like there, this, there could be so many things, and it could literally be almost like a re I mean, not a recreation, right? But it, it could have the dynamic of like the warring period that I was talking about, where the three kingdoms, where there's a lot of back and forth, right? Um, I do personally think it's very important. Like if you give your word, honor it, uh, just because, I, I, you know, how you do anything is how you do everything. That's one of my favorite quotes. But also uh, as a kingdom, it's really important that you do that just because the right players will want to come to your kingdom when you do that. Uh, and when you don't do that, you're not going to attract some really high quality characters, but also uh, Oh, high quality players, but also in the future, like you have to look out for your diplo, right? So a lot of it is like, you almost want to honor your word for your self-interest. And uh, hopefully maybe this shakes this video. I don't, I'm a small content creator, right? So who knows, but maybe this video will shake things up a little bit. Maybe think people will think differently, do something different. And in the future, maybe we'll see more KVKs where it is a free for all. Maybe there is one side that's stronger, but just because they're stronger doesn't mean they're win. Because when you're stronger, it's more likely that people are going to gain up on you. And you can actually make KBK way more dynamic and fun. Again, that's my opinion. Uh, if you guys watch all the way to the end, please like and subscribe. Goal is to get to 1,000 subscribers. Uh, maybe by the time you watch this, I'll be past it. But goal is to get as many subscribers as possible. Uh, again, thank you for watching. And I'll talk to you guys next time.